there are lots of reasons that you want to call one flow from another flow inside Power Automate. Things like you want to reduce the complexity of the flow, sometimes you want to put some work in a separate flow and assign it to another developer to build it for you, or sometimes it's a matter of reusability. There are some kind of actions that you want to put in one flow, and then you want to call that flow from multiple flows. That's out of question. It used to be very easy. You just create a flow which is fired manually by pushing a button, easy, and at the same time, you could use run a child flow action inside your parent flow to call the child flow. Well, that ease is gone, and now in the past two, three months as I check, when you just take that approach, it throws you two errors, and I'm pretty sure that one of those errors brought you to this video. Now, let's see how we can do it because it's gonna be fun, although I like the way that it used to be a lot better, but there are valid reasons that Microsoft implemented this way. So let's get into it without wasting time. Typically, when you use the run a child flow action or something like this, and you pick your flow, the moment that you try saving it, you will see one or two errors depending on the type and the nature of your child flow. The first one is that it says it should end with the response action that we will get into it. The second one is something related to connections. So before anything, let's quickly build a very simple child flow. To do this, I created an instant flow that you can run it by pushing a button. At the moment, it just has a trigger, but it's supposed to go to SharePoint inside a SharePoint list called products list, and it's supposed to pick the product that the ID is provided by the caller, and it should email the product name and the product description to someone. So I intentionally use two connections, one connection to SharePoint and another connection to our mail server. Let's see how we can do that. So first, I want to use get item because I want to pick only one item. I use get item, not get items. And for the get item, I need the URL of the site. So copy link address. I bring it here, drop down, custom, and I just copy and paste the URL here. It complains, it's all right, don't worry about it. It still gives me the list of the items that I want and the list name is products list, so I pick up the products list. There we go. And I also need a product ID that I'd rather get a product ID from the user. And this is the unique ID of every product that I picked. So we go back inside our flow and the ID should come from the trigger. And I say, I want a number to be product ID whatever it comes from the caller. So for the ID, I can simply provide the product ID and this one is good. I can save it. It's saved successfully and the error is gone, we're good. And right after that, I want to send that information to an email address. So I pick send email v2, bingo, and I just send it to myself. Subject is going to be the product title, which I have renamed it to product name. And for the body, I want to enter the description. There we go. And everything else is good. I guess, importance normal, everything is good. Let me just save it. So this is supposed to be my child flow. I can simply test it and show you the result. Manually test. It has two connections, keep that in mind. I click on continue and I enter the product number. Let me pick a product number that exists. For example, number three, number three. And I click on run flow, done. Flow is running, apparently it is done. I just need to go back to my mailbox and check if it is there. And this is what I got in my mailbox. Beautiful. And my child flow works as expected. Now let's call this from another flow. I get out of it. By the way, I created the flow inside the solution. 
naturally, when you create a flow inside the solution, it takes you straight to the classic view, which is fantastic. I'm not still happy with that modern designer. So let's go to automation, cloud flow, and I want to create another instant flow. And I want to call it parent flow demo. And it's going to be a manually triggered flow. I say create and I try to run it. It doesn't need any parameter. And I want to use run a child flow. Gosh, here. I pick up the other flow, which is going to be email SharePoint record. And it's asking for product ID. Let me hard code the product ID. For example, I pick product ID four here, hard code it. And this is where the problem starts. I click on save and it doesn't like it. And these are the two typical errors that you will see. The first one is that it says, hey, when you call a flow from another flow or from Power Apps, it should have a response. So that's the first thing. The second thing goes back to the permissions. So let's go and fix them one by one. I keep this window open because I cannot save it. Power Automate Engine does, does not let you save it if it contains an error. Now in a new window, again, I go to Power Automate, I go to the solutions, I open the child flow demo solution that we had. And the only flow that is there at the moment is email SharePoint record. So I have two separate windows. One of them shows me the child flow. The other shows me the parent or the color flow. Now, in my child flow, the first error says I must have a response. And this response is shared between Power Apps and Power Automate. So if I scroll down, you will have 1500. So this search is not that effective. I say a response Power Apps. Probably you will find it here, respond to a Power App or Flow. Beautiful, we got it. And because it's a child and someone is calling it, I can send the response and I can say text. The response is going to be email sent successfully. All right. So this is the response the caller will get. Let me just save it and get out of it. So now that my child flow has a response, you will see one error is gone. The other one is about the permission. When we go to the manual flow permission settings, let me just click on it. The permissions are provided at two levels. One is the co-owners or the people who can actually get into the flow and edit it. Or you will have something called run-only users. At the moment, I don't have run-only user. Those are the users that they can run the flow no matter where they are using it. Either it's a web URL or they use it from the Power Automate client app. Doesn't matter at the moment. We want to call this child flow from another flow. And this is how it works. Run only users. I click on edit. I don't need to add another user. But naturally, when you are calling the flow, it inherits the permissions from the person or from the account that is calling that flow. And this is what it means. So we have two connections, one to SharePoint, one to Office 365. In your flow, you may have many more, and they are all running under the caller user or under the other flow that is calling this flow. But run a child flow doesn't like it. So you have to pick a specific connection. It gives you a warning. Don't worry about it. I need to do exactly the same thing for the Office 365 Outlook. So I pick a fixed email address. Again, warning is fine. So it does not use the caller permission. I can simply click on save. And now, no matter who calls this flow, this flow for those two connections always are using the account that we provided as the fixed privilege for those connections. Let's go back to our caller and see if it is happy now. Not yet, not updated yet. I close this one. I try to save it again and see if it works. Seems like it did. Beautiful. Now let's see if our parent flow can run the child flow. Test, manually test, and I can say run flow. 
done. I'm calling the parent so it doesn't prompt me for anything. It goes and calls the child flow. And if that call is successful, I should get an email in my mailbox for product number four, which is my microphone. Is that all? Yes. To fix your problem quickly and let you go through this error, we are done. But pay attention, you are hard coding a connection. So when you are deploying from one environment to another environment, that's a different story that I'm not going to get there into this in this short video. But just a heads up. All right, we are done. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, a like and subscribe is highly appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon in the next video.